Okay, I just want to give you a real quick uh, introduction to what damp motion is. We're not going to do any examples here in this case because I just want to give you an overall idea of the concept here. So here is the equation. You notice that it's much more complicated than the one that we looked at uh, previously. And this actually describes more realistically what happens in the real world. In the last couple of examples we did, we showed a spring bouncing back and forth. Uh, there's, with that, there'd be no air resistance and no friction, so it would bounce back and forth forever. But in the real world, we know that it's, uh, if no normally we will have that kind of motion going because if you have a spring bouncing back and forth, you know it's going to eventually stop. Um, or if you have a pendulum swinging back and forth, that's eventually going to stop as well because we got air resistance and friction uh, at play there. So this is really what happens with damp motion. It, we begin, it bounces up and down, but every time the amplitude gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So therefore, the A here is not necessarily not uh, the actual amplitude. The A itself is your displacement at time equals zero. So how far you pull the spring down initially, where you are away, how far you are, that's actually what the A represents here. Now we have a couple other variables that are in this formula. Your B would be a damping factor. That's your coefficient. So uh, depends on how much resistance that you have. So the air resistance or friction, that's going to be the, the value you put in for B. The M is the mass of the object. That does have effect also with damping. Uh, eventually it'll oscillate back and forth and settle back down. Here's your period. That's the same formula that you should recognize from before. And that omega here, we see the omega actually in our formula. So here's the formula uh, for damp motion. We still have a cosine in there, so it's still going to be oscillating back and forth, but we have these other things at play. So one thing you might notice is, why does the formula have an E in there? That's an ex exponent. Well, that goes back to pre-calculus, and this, if we draw something E to the X, uh, we have an ex exponential, but notice we have a negative here in this case. Now, a negative would be a line that looks like this. So actually, your amplitude, the A value here, actually depends on this function. So every time it goes up and goes down, it's not going to be straight anymore. It's not constant. It has to do with where it is based off of this e to the t graph. So that's why it looks like that because you see that it's actually falling and going down. It resembles this exponential model right here that we that you probably talked about before or have seen in pre-calculus. Okay, then we have this right here. Now let's, what happens if we have no damping factor. Let's suppose that B is zero. Now B equals zero means we have no resistance at all. Well, let's look at what happens. If I put a zero in for B, this whole thing turns into a zero. E to the zero is one, so I get A. If I put B equals zero inside here, uh, what happens is that part's going to take that out, and so the whole thing simplifies down to basic simple harmonic motion. So if the, if the B value is zero, that means then it just goes back to what it originally was before. So uh, you can see the relationship there. So this is all I wanted to do. I just wanted to give you an overall idea of damp motion, but we're not actually going to look at any examples here. I just want you to be aware of what the formula looks like.